Chapter 8, The Roman Republic, Study Guide and Turkey. Number 1. Who could hold office when Rome first became a republic? Only patrician males could hold office when Rome first became a republic. Number 2. What were the Twelve Tables and why were they put on display in the Forum? The Twelve Tables were Rome's first written laws. They were put on display so that way everyone would know what the laws were and that they were applied equally to everyone. Number 3. What happened on each of these important dates? 509 BC, 267 BC, and 44 BC. In 509 BC, Rome became a republic after kicking out their last king, Tarquin the Proud. In 267 BC, the Romans took control of most of the Italian peninsula. And in 44 BC, G Julius Caesar declared himself dictator for life and was later on assassinated by his fellow senators. Number 4. What did Tiberius and Gaius Gracchus want to do to help the Roman people? They wanted to give land to the poor. Once again, the other senators did not agree and both of them were killed for their actions. Number five, what is the rule of law? The rule of law is an idea that all laws apply to everyone equally. In other words, there are different laws for men or for women or for rich or for poor people. Number six, who were the chief executives or top government officials of the Roman Republic and how long did they rule? The top government officials in the Roman Republic were called consuls. Each consul would rule for one year. Number seven. Who could be a senator in the Roman Republic? Only patricians. Number eight. What were the two social classes of Rome? These were both in your vocabulary that we did for chapter 8. They were the patricians, who were the rich landowning class, and then the plebeians, the small, farmer, small farmers, shopkeepers, artisans, etc. They made up the majority of the population of Rome. Who did the tribunes represent in the Roman Republic? The tribunes were appointed government officials who represented the plebeians. Number 10, you had to tell me if the statement was true for both the United States or Rome. So had three branches, both the U.S. and Rome had that. Presidents were only in the U.S. Praetors were only in Rome. The Senate, we both have. House of Representatives is just true for the United States. Judges is true for both. Consuls is true for the Romans. The Assembly is true for the Romans. Veto, we both have that power. And citizens vote for representatives in both the Roman Republic and the United States. Number 11, describe how Julius Caesar moved Rome from a republic to an empire. Remember, this is your essay question on the test. First, he declared himself dictator for life. He filled the Senate with people who were loyal to him to make sure that what he wanted would get passed. He made reforms or changes for the better by granting citizenship to those who were living in Roman territories, not just those living in Rome. He also started new colonies to provide land for the landless and to create more jobs. He ordered slave owners to hire more free workers, and so all of these reforms made him very popular with the poor. Explain why Rome first decided to fight Carthage and tell the results of each war. It began with both of them wanting to control the island of Sicily. There were three Punic Wars. Rome won all three. In the second one, it was Hannibal and Scipio. And finally, in the third, Carthage, destroyed, um, or Carthage was destroyed by the Romans in 146 B.C. Discuss how Rome's location helped it to grow. It was located 15 miles up the Tiber River, which meant that it was far enough from the sea to escape the pirate raids. It was a source of water for trade, and also it was built on seven hills, which made it easier to defend. If you're at a higher level in the ground, you can see your enemies coming. The Apennine Mountains were right behind Rome, and the Alps separated the entire Italian peninsula from the rest of Europe as well. That's it.